hello everyone. <laughs> Thanks much. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am here with a long overdue video, which is my yearly fall reads rec list. Um, I meant to do this much earlier in the month. In fact, I think I even meant to do it in September. But then life and the endless shit show that is 2017 kept happening. So here we are. Luckily, most of these are not really Halloween specific and can be read really just sort of in the general season, which I think counts for November as well. So the first book I am recommending for fall is is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This is a gothic romance set in the 1950s, I believe, written in the 1950s, and it is about a girl who is actually never named, who marries Mr. De Winter and goes to his estate to find out that, like, everyone in the estate is obsessed with his dead first wife named Rebecca. This book is kind of insane in the way that most good gothics are. Um, it has the old servant of Rebecca who is completely and utterly devoted to the ghost of her mistress. It has Mr. De Winter who is just like super creepy and he's like much much older than the main character and he kind of treats her like a dog even though he's technically her husband and it's just great. I loved it. It was a lot of fun. The next book is in kind of a similar vein. It is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. This is the first and so far only Shirley Jackson that I have read, although I will definitely now be reading more of them. The main character is a girl named Kat who is the younger sister, um, her older sister Constance, and her have basically been shut up in their mansion for the last I think like 10 years or something, basically ever since their family died of poisoning. And Constance, Mary Cat, and their Uncle Julian are the only ones who survived. Uncle Julian has been confined to a wheelchair since then. So the plot kicks off when their cousin comes into town and it turns out that he's probably there looking for the supposed fortune that they have buried in the house. And the townspeople all hate Mary Cat and Constance and basically it all just ends up spiraling into a big snowball of crazy and I loved it. The next book I am recommending for fall is The Scorpio Races by Maggie Steve Otter. This one I think is actually pretty timely because the main event takes place on November 1st, which is a race where the people of the island all capture throughout the month of November these uh, murderous seahorses that come out of the ocean and then on the 1st of November they ride them and they race them because people are insane. And it's, so it's got some Kelpie mythology aspects to it. They're not exactly Kelpies. Um, it also has a lot of stuff about family and baking and small town life and I really loved it. I thought it was kind of enchanting. The main character Puck is the first girl who's going to be running in the race and then um, Sean Kendrick is the remaining champion. They're about the same age and their relationship is really fascinating and really lovely and I thought that the atmosphere of this one was really really cool and kind of austere in a way that was also very lovely and homey and I could see why people fell in love with the island because I kind of fell in love with the island. I did meet Maggie Steve Otter and I asked her about where this island was and she refused to tell me although she did say that someone figured it out so if you know tell me because I'm interested. Someone also apparently figured out the time period that this takes place in and I can't figure out that exactly either sometime after the 1920s but that's all I got. So the next one that I am recommending for fall is Anya's Ghost by Vera Brosgall. This is a graphic novel that I read for the Booktubeathon, I believe, back in July or August, whenever that was. And it is basically about a girl who stumbles into a pit and finds a ghost girl there, and she ends up taking the ghost girl home with her. And the ghost starts out very helpful, and then in the way of ghosts gets a little bit less helpful as the story goes on. And it's a fun coming of age story. I thought that the art was really fun and really lively, and I liked that there were like whole pages with with no dialogue and so it really just told the story through pictures and I thought that the ghost had a nice creepy edge to it without it being like super horror or scary. The next book that I want to recommend is Liar by Justine Larbeleister. This is a difficult one to talk about because the entire premise is that the main character, it is told from first person, and she is a pathological liar and so she is extremely difficult to trust in this book where she literally begins the book by saying I promise I will not tell a lie and then she just continues to lie to you throughout most of the book. So it begins when her kind of boyfriend, Zach, is killed, and it basically becomes a thriller where her lies start to unravel and her life starts to unravel and it takes a lot of twists and turns and she keeps manipulating the reader and I think that it's really fascinating and really worth checking out. 
So the next one that I want to talk about is Sunshine by Robin McKinley. I actually just finished this one like maybe a couple weeks ago. I have loved Robin McKinley since I discovered her back I think almost 10 years ago now when I read Deer Skin, which is a super fucked up fairy tale retelling. This one is Robin McKinley does urban fantasy vampire novel and Robin McKinley is just weird. All of her books are weird. I hadn't read a book of hers in a long time, so I'd kind of forgotten how weird they get. But basically, her doing a vampire novel means that it's got this, like, post-war, post-like supernatural creature war that has like completely changed the fabric of society and so everyone like knows that things like demons and vampires exist and like technology has shifted because a lot of the infrastructure got destroyed and the main character is a girl who works at this local coffee shop bakery. She is the baker there and she drives out to the lake one night because she just needs a breather from her family because it's a small family-owned business and everyone's kind of all up in each other's business all the time and so she drives out to the lake and ends up getting taken captive by vampires and so they take her to this old abandoned mansion and chain her to the wall in this ballroom and also chained to the wall in the same room is a hungry vampire and so she assumes that she's about to get eaten but when the day comes he still hasn't eaten her and it turns into this much more complicated battle. They end up having to sort of team up against the vampires that abducted them. I will say that the pacing for this one is weird. There's a stretch in the middle that, where it really slows down and not a whole lot happens but that's kind of true of Robin McKinley books in general. Her pacing does tend to flow differently than a lot of other books that I've read and it also kind of ends in a strange not quite ending place but I still really like the book and I just love Robin McKinley's writing. Okay so the next one that I want to recommend I admit going in is going to be a bit of a hard sell. It is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. I realize that this is a 1200 page 19th century French novel. I know that but it also has a host of really fun side characters. It has some great revenge plotting. It has a really angry lesbian named Eugenie who ends up getting her own version of a happy ending. And I just think it's fantastic. I think that if you have only seen like a movie or a TV adaptation, unless it was the anime Gankutsuo, you are missing out on a whole lot of stuff because there's an entire second generation that most adaptations cut out because it's a massive, massive novel and they don't have the time for it. Uh, but there's a whole host of basically the kids that have wronged Edmond Dantes and put him into prison actually are like fully fleshed out characters and have their own desires and motivations and problems that they need to work through and the Count is kind of manipulating them to get to their parents but then you know there's this whole question of does the sin of the father pass on to the child and I think it's really fun and it's not as serious as you might think given that it's from the 19th century. Alexandre Dumas does know how to have fun. Okay so the next ones that I wanted to recommend are because I've been getting into Hannibal again and this is I think my third time watching it all the way through. So it is Red Dragon and Silence of the Lambs by Thomas Harris. I know that there are another two in the series. I personally don't think that they're worth reading but I think that Red Dragon and Silence of the Lambs both are. I think that Silence of the Lambs is probably a little bit better written but I think that Red Dragon one introduces you to the character of Will Graham so if you're gonna watch the show Hannibal I think that it's really kind of important to know who Will Graham is and also it just has some really poetic writing. Um, I will put in a little caveat that because these books were written in the 80s and they tend to feature um, people of sort of alternate sexualities and people with disabilities they are not always portrayed particularly well because research hadn't gotten very far in the time that he was writing them so he got a lot of things kind of wrong and if you've watched Silence of the Lambs or if you've watched what was the adaptation of Red Dragon called I think it was called Manhunter or something then you know you're probably aware of the ways in which the villains in these stories are kind of problematic to a modern day sensibility but I still think that there's something really worth reading in these books. And also Hannibal Lecter is just fascinating. So next up is going to be the Dream Blood series by N.K. Jemisin. I say series, it's only two books, but the first one is called The Killing Moon and this is one that is based off of Egyptian society and I guess Egyptian, not folklore, but maybe sort of religious setup. The whole concept of it is that basically there are these priests and priestesses who can enter people's minds and go into their dreams. And so basically people can be healed through this or they can be killed if they are judged corrupt and peace is the only law in the city. So if you threaten the peace, you can be judged corrupt and killed. 
It is a weird series. It's got some like zombie-esque things to it because there's a creature that is preying on people's minds and they end up falling into like a permanent sleep that they end up dying from. It is messed up because all of N.K. Jemisin's stuff really is, but it also deals with a lot of things like corruption of power and systems of oppression and all that other kind of stuff that she tends to write about. And one of N.K. Jemisin's strengths is in her world building, and so I really loved the divisions of the priests and the way that the dream magic worked. I thought that, that was all really inventive. But, you know, it is kind of messed up, and I shelved this with my zombie section for a reason. So the final book for this year's video is going to be Labyrinth Lost by Zoraida Cordelia. Cordova. This one was released last year and it is about a bisexual teenage girl who belongs to a family of brujas and then on her death day she doesn't really want to be a witch and she ends up wishing her magic away but it ends up accidentally like casting away her family into essentially the land of the dead and she has to journey back into it in order to get them out. I liked this book. I did end up wanting just a little bit more from it but it is a debut novel from the author and I still think it is really worth checking out because there aren't that many books with bisexual main characters frankly. And also it's got some really cool stuff with folklore and Mexican traditions in it. And so I think that it is still a really fun novel even if I did maybe just want a little bit more from it. But a lot of other people seem to really like it and I'm really hoping that as the author matures um, she ends up just sort of bringing just that little bit extra that I was looking for. So that is all for my fall reads of 2017. I understand this is kind of late going up but I hope that you guys have enjoyed it and let me know if you've read any of them or if you're planning to read any of them down in the comments and I'll see you guys very soon with another video. Thanks for watching guys! Bye.